right, I'm Charlie Craven. Today we're going to tie sort of a fun little fly. Uh, this one is called the Morning Wood Special. And uh, rather than starting on a hook, I'm going to start with a needle in my vise. So this is just a regular sewing needle. And I've broken the, the eye off of it just uh, uh, as I've clamped it in my vise a few thousand times. Um, but that doesn't make any difference. I don't need the eye. I just need the point. Um, so I've clamped it in my jaws just like I would a hook. Uh, pointy end is out. And I'm going to start with some 6 aught unithread in Rusty Brown. And I'm going to start this thread just kind of just up off the taper of the needle. I'm going to create a little jam knot there, but I'm going to leave myself a long tag end, and I'll clip that back in my material spring so I don't cut that tag end. I want to leave that on there. Now I'm going to come in. I've got a scrap of uh, thin fly foam that is about 2 by 2 millimeters. You can see that's pretty square. Um, it doesn't have to be exactly square. That one's pretty darn square. Um, it doesn't have to be exactly square. Um, and I'm going to take this and I'm going to start it and just tie it down to the needle with a couple turns and I want to go about 10 millimeters forward and then I'll come 10 back and I don't come off the end of the foam and I'll fold it back again. So what this is going to do is sort of build a bit of an underbody for our body that we're going to shape over the top of this. So then I'll cross hatch that one more time, forward and back, and again I'll leave my thread hanging on top of that foam underbody there at the at the front of the needle. Now I've got a piece of thin fly foam. Uh, this is uh, oh I call it American cheese color. I think it's called gold gold on the package, um, and I've cut this to six millimeters wide for a size six. Morningwood Special. This is a big golden stone um, imitation, or a size 8 golden stone imitation. Um, so I've cut it to about 6 millimeters wide. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece of foam, and right at the center of its length, I'm going to poke that needle through right in its middle, like so. And I've got my thread hanging here on top of the foam underbody. And I'm going to lift this up. And I'm going to turn this side to side so you can see the, the long end is, is facing out toward the camera there. And then I'll push these two back. Let me get my hands in the, or out of the way. My thread is coming out of the top here. And I'm going to sandwich that foam underbody along the, the needle there. And I'm going to start to make the first segment. I'll make four or five turns. As I start to make this segment, I want to make a band of thread. That might be eight or ten turns. You can see how that's an obvious segment in the foam. Then I'm going to lift my thread up. I'm going to divide the foam back. And when I cross here, I want to cross through the division point on the foam. So if I turn that just a bit, you can see that I'm crossing as the foam separated. I don't want that cross to show on the outside of the foam. Now again, I'll bring my thread up. And the reason I do this with the thread up is I can see the thread from this angle to create the second segment and make sure that I don't have any of that cross showing on the outside. So again, another little band of thread. Lift up, divide those pieces back, and I'm come just to the end of the underbody. I'm not going to come off of it. Bring my thread up and create the last segment. So this is the start of our segmented body. And you can see those segments are obviously uh, you know, thread bands. Those thread bands will show up. That's going to be part of the fly. That's going to create the segmentation on the abdomen of this fly. And then I'll come in and just whip finish. And I usually just do a hand whip here. Um, it's close enough. You can still do a, a whip finish with your whip finish tool. I'm going to pull that down tight and clip that thread off. Now I'm going to grab tightly a hold of that and slide it off of the needle. And what I've got left hanging out is that tag into that thread. So what I want to do here is grab that tag in and pull it. And I'll pull all the slack out so I can tighten that segment from the inside out. And then I'll just trim that thread out. So we've got our pre-made extended body. I can take the needle out of my vise. And I can come in with my hook. Now the first thing I want to do with my hook is pinch the barb down. This is less for the fish at this point as it is for the tying process. What I'll do now is I'm going to take my foam body 
I'll try to do this where you can see it. And I'm going to take the hook point and poke it through the foam right at the base, right in front of where I finished that underbody. Again, right through the center. I'll show you when I'm done here. Like so. So now I'll take that foam body and just sort of put it perpendicular to the hook and slide it out of the way so that I've got access to the hook here to tie. All right, now I'm going to start my thread. Same thread, just up here behind the hook eye. And I want to dress the shank all the way back to the hook point. I'm not going to come down around the bend. What I want to do is I want to leave or finish with my thread hanging at the hook point there. And then I'll bring my thread back up to the front. And I'll take that same little scrap of foam that we had before. I'm going to catch it just a couple eye lengths behind the hook eye. And I'm going to spiral back over it all the way back to the hook point as well. And I'll come forward over that. This is going to become a gluing surface, so we've got a little more surface area. This morning wood special started off as a variation of my Charlie Boy Hopper and uh, shares a lot of the same techniques, although the fly is very different. So now I'll bring my thread all the way back, not quite off the end of that foam underbody, and I'm about ready to tie the underbody down. So what I'm going to do, just here at the bend, only at the bend, is I'm going to take a little shot of Zappa Gap and put it on top of that foam back there at the bend. Now I'm going to slide the foam so it's on the top and bottom of the hook, and that pushes my thread to my near side over here. And I'm going to slide it up so it butts up to that binder strip. And you can see the reason I stopped the underbody at the hook point, is I want to make sure that I've got plenty of room in the hook gap so that I don't encroach on the hook gap. I've still got plenty of hooking power there. I'm going to create the next segment couple turns on there with eight or ten more turns of thread I'll separate the two pieces I'm going to cross on my near side bring the thread just slightly forward and create another segment and you can see I'll tighten the top half down then come around and tighten the bottom half get a few turns there and then form that band those bands are the segmentation of the of the real thing, so we want to make those prominent. Once I've got two of them on there, I'll separate this foam one more time. Bring the thread through, through, the, through the near side, and I'm going to move it forward about twice the distance of these segments. At this point, I'll pinch these down together. Move just a touch more. I'm going to pinch these down together. I'll cinch this down all the way around. Get a couple turns on there. And then I want to just make sure everything's square on the hook. So that last segment is a little bigger than the other. It's twice as wide as the other, other bunch. The reason for that is, is a real stonefly has a pretty big breastplate. And as I was coming up with this fly, that's uh, what I was trying to imitate. And it was simple enough to just leave a, a larger segment there. So I want to square everything up. Um, but I only made a couple of turns here. I don't need the band of thread. We're going to tie a few different materials in right there. So we don't need everything... Uh, we don't need a bunch of thread wraps there. We're going to have a chance to build that up. Now I'm going to pull those two pieces of foam back again. I'm going to bring the thread up to just behind the hook eye. And again, on my near side, I'll pinch these two pieces of foam together. I'm going to come around and tighten the top down, and then tighten the bottom down. And I'll get a couple turns there as well. I want to anchor that good and tight. Now, when I was coming up with this fly, I went through all sorts of rigmarole trying to figure out what to do with this bottom piece of foam. Um, and you can poke a hole in it and fold it back and sort of make it become the top piece of foam. Um, I prefer to very carefully lift my thread out of the way and push my scissors in. I'm going to stretch this foam a bit. Let me turn this just a bit so you can see it a little better. Stretch this foam a bit and cut it off. And that should snug right up against the rest of the foam and it doesn't leave a big stub. Now the trick to that is when you stretch that you don't want to stretch that too tight. If you stretch it too tight it could actually slip underneath that thread wrap. So now I'm going to back up a wrap of thread and I'm going to cross 
across that front segment from front to back so that I'm in this second segment here. And at this point, I'm going to put the legs in. And the legs are sexy legs or barred silly legs. Um, these are gold colored. I'm going to take one strand on my near side here and I'm going to catch it. And I try to line it up with the seam in the foam. I'll catch it with a turn or two. And then I'm going to cross my thread back all the way back to that next segment and catch it again here on my near side with a couple of turns. So those legs are tied in right along that near side. Now on the far side, I'm going to do the same thing in the opposite order. I'm going to catch these at the back. And you can see where the, the Charlie Boy Hopper similarity comes in. I'll cross the thread across the top into that next segment. And I'll pull that leg into place and catch it with a couple turns there as well. You can tweak those legs right down into place. You can see how they'll sit right in the seam in the foam. Now these back legs I'm going to trim just beyond the end of the body, just a hair beyond the end of the body. And the front legs are about that same length. Like so. So now we're ready to put the wing in. And when I was coming up with this fly, um, so many salmon fly patterns are a salmon fly that is happy like you'd find him sitting on a willow branch along the bank of the river. Um, and very few of them have their wings spread out like you find a salmon fly when he's in the water, or golden stone fly, I should say. Um, when he's in the water, not on purpose. Um, when they're flitting around on the water, their wings are spread out. Um, they're fluttering around, and they're not very happy about it, generally speaking. Um, so I'm going to tie what amounts to a spit wing stone fly. He's going to have flared wings, um, two individual wings. And the material I'm going to use is called Umqua Stonefly Wing. This is a material that we came up with specifically for this pattern. Um, it's polypropylene along with some UV flash. You can see just a bit of UV flash in there, and it's mixed colors. Um, this is dark gray, light gray, and brown with some UV flash in it. And the amount of hair that you, uh, or material that you put in this wing is sort of up to you. You can do it very sparsely, um, or you can do it a little bit more heavily. If you do it heavily, um, the fly is a little bit more uh, chubby-like. So if you're... Uh, going to use it as a dry dropper, it does float a little bit better with a little bit more material in it. So I'm going to take this clump of material, and you can see I'm sort of pinching it down, rolling it at its center, the center of its length, and I've got about three inches of this here. And I'm going to tie this in with two turns, one right over the top of the other, right in that band of thread, right in that first segment. And I'm going to pull my near side back toward me, and I'm going to take my thread up and behind the far wing for two turns. And essentially what I did there, i turn this a bit, is made poorly tied spinner wings. You can see how they're flared back. And I've just got a couple turns. Now all the turns that we make on this fly from this point out will become cumulative. So you don't need a whole lot of turns on any one part at this point. Don't get carried away. It'll be easy to bulk this fly up. Now I'm going to add a little indicator. And I do a two color indicator. And the first color I'll put down is black, and the reason that I use black first is twofold. One, when I just used the pink, I could still see the pink indicator from the bottom of the fly. In the case of that, by putting the black underneath it or putting it down first, I'm able to hide the pink from the bottom of the fly. The other thing that the black does is when you've got flat light on the water, that silver light, this black shows up like no tomorrow. So as counterintuitive as that sounds, um, black can actually make a really nice indicator. So I've got a clump of black McFlylon here, and I've brushed it out and cut it square on the ends. And I'm going to measure it just back to the end of that first segment. I'm going to lay it in on top. I'm going to catch it with a couple of turns. I'll make sure that's anchored down good and tight. And then I'm going to come in with some pink or cerise colored McFlylon. Um, this is the most visible color, I think, and I'll cut the end of it square. And I'm going to lay this just a bit short of the black. And I'll lay it in on top and catch it with a couple of turns. Now I can lift all these butt ends up. And this is where a good sharp pair of scissors comes in really handy. I'm going to clip that off nice and close. Now, because we've got everything tied in and tied off there at one point, I'm going to take it just a little shot of Zappa Gap here and put it right down on the base of that indicator. And you can see it'll kind of bleed in 
soak into those thread wraps and that'll help to lock everything in place. Alright, once I've got that zappa gap on there, I'm going to pull this far leg out of the way. I'm going to bring the thread up and just in front of those butt ends to the middle of this head segment. Once my thread is hanging there, I'm going to sweep this front piece back along with both of those front legs, so sort of all one motion here. And I'll usually spin this thread up a bit here so it makes a nice tight crease. And I'm going to divide that head in half with a couple turns of thread. Like so. Now I'm going to bring my thread up on the inside of this near leg, pull this foam forward, and cross the thread back up to the base of the wings. Now at this point I'm going to fold this piece of foam down one more time. Now I'm going to crease it down in place with a couple more turns. And you want to watch your thread wraps um, to make sure that they're all stacked on top of each other. You can see we've got a nice clean band of thread here. We don't want that to spread out. Now I'll come in and whip finish right over the top. So I'm going to use my standard size whip finisher here and go right through this thread band with about three turns. Cinch that down nice and tight and trim the thread out. So now I'll trim this piece of foam that we've got left here on top. So I'm going to come in and just trim straight across to just leave a little stub there across the top of the fly. Now my wing length, I'm going to sweep all my wing fibers up. My wing length is going to be just to the end of the body. So I'm going to hold that in place and trim those off just there at the end. And then I'll sort of fan them out to each side. Now I don't love the square look of those wings. So um, what I'll do is I'll turn this a bit and I'm going to come in and just round the edges and rag the ends of these wings up a bit. And you can see with my scissors coming in from the ends of the fibers. So they're not quite so square, like I'm a little bit more ragged. Not so manicured. So just a little bit more raggedy. Slide our fly down just a bit here. Give you a better view. But I do want those wings widespread like so. Now we're going to add the last set of legs, and uh, it took me forever to figure out how to do this. This is one of the things that bugged me about this fly. It looked pretty good at this point, uh, but it wasn't quite finished. And one of the things that bugged me was that it's only got four legs, and a real salmon fly very obviously has six legs. Um, and it took me a long time to figure out what to do about it, but I finally did, and I'll show you what I came up with. Um, in this seam between the two pieces of foam here, uh, we've not put any glue or anything, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this up and I'm going to take a bobbin threader, this is a wire bobbin threader, and I'm going to slide it under the hook shank and over that bottom piece of foam, like so. You can see it's under the leg on that side, it's under the leg on that side. Now I'm going to take another strand of leg material and I'm going to tuck it in the end of the threader. And I'm going to pull the threader out, and that will pull the leg through. So that adds my other set of legs. Now, this leg would never come out. You could just leave this just as it is here. Um, but what I'm going to do is on this, on this near side, I'll turn this around so you can see it. I'm going to take just a little dab of Zappa Gap on this near side, and I'm just going to put some on that leg. Get that where you can see it. And if I stretch the leg, I can pull that zapping gap section into the body. And that will glue those legs down in place. And now that leg will never, ever, ever come out. So now I'm going to come in and I'm going to trim our new set of legs to about the same length as the others. Like so. So we've got six legs across the bottom of the fly. You can see that's very creepy crawly looking. Now we get to do the fun part. We're going to color him up a little bit. So to color this fly, I'm going to use, this is a 
Copic marker. This is pale sepia. And one of the things I like about these markers is they've got this watercolor style tip. Um, it, it's not quite so sharp and uh, rigid that it's going to really smear the ink in. So I'm going to lift the wing up and I'm just going to brush up the body. I don't want to color down in the indentations. I want to leave the, the highlights there. And I'll go all the way over the extended portion up the sides. And that just adds a little bit more of a gold coloration. Now obviously you could tie this for a salmon fly or a squala, uh, just different colored foam. Really very similar style markings, but uh, different colored foam. You can see that that marker is not far off from the beginning color of the foam. So I'll color that whole top surface. And then on the bottom, I'm just going to run the marker right up the middle. And kind of make a stripe there. Then I'll take another scrap of foam and I sort of shoe polish that and you'll see that that kind of smears that ink so it's not quite so drastic. We've got some highlights and lowlights there. And that really makes all the difference. I mean, people ask why I catch so many fish. It's things like that. It's the details. It's the little stuff. So now I'm going to take my black Copic marker and I'm going to lift these wings up and try to get this where you can see it. And on the top edge of this body, outside edge, I'm just going to run this marker up that outside edge. Do the same thing on the near side here. And then I'm going to take the tip of the marker and run right up the middle. And that looks pretty golden stony right there. Now I'm going to take the marker across the head, and I usually end up making three bands from front to back. Clean them up just a little bit to bar the top of the head. Now as long as I've got the marker in my hand, and there's no reason not to do this, I'm going to take and put a little eye on each side. Everybody knows that flies with eyes work way better than flies without eyes. That's not open for discussion, uh, especially when it's that easy. And there is our finished Morningwood Special Golden Stone. I'm going to back the camera up. I'll give you a little bit better, uh, clear view of it here. Um, you can come in and come through this thread band here across the bottom. And just put a little shot of head cement along there. Got a lot of stuff tied in and tied off right there. That's not a bad idea. Kind of get our legs repositioned. And that is our finished little critter. Pretty creepy crawly. Fun little fly to tie. Went real slow there, so this one took a while to tie. But uh, um, that is a Morningwood Special Golden Stone. Like I said, I'll give you a little bit... Uh, a little bit wider view here so you can get the whole profile and we'll take it from there. Take care. See ya.